Didn't even do chest today. Today was lower body. What's up, everybody? Uh, welcome to this week's Q&A. Uh, welcome to the new subscribers uh, from Bromley's channel. Uh, you'll find out quickly I'm not a professional YouTuber, um, but I enjoy helping people and uploading videos, uh, uh, and I do coach on the side, so that's what I do. Welcome. Glad to have you guys here. Uh, hope you have low expectations. Uh, so let's get right into the, the questions. Uh, what do you think about 52 sets? I think it is more than 51, and I think it is less than 53. There you go. Con Baba versus Kiriakos Grizzly. Come on, man. That's Grizzly easy. Like, Grizzly's legit uh, strong and performs actual feats of strength. Uh, Con Baba is a phony. Uh, how many... I feel like this is one of those things that I say it and there's something weird in here and somebody's going to clip it, but how many chimpanzees can dance on the head of a pin? Yeah, I, that one's over my head. I hope you guys got some laughs out of that joke and I literally don't have an answer for it. I assume that's some sort of joke. You got me. Would you say the reason UFO secrecy is the possible reason that aliens are able to bench more? And this would cause shock to the male alpha gym society. Yeah, they can probably bench, bench more telepathically. Uh, <laughs> mog us all uh, while being like puny looking. Uh, for how long do you keep the same things in your program? If you switch something, is it because of the sake of doing it? So when you've spent enough time with it or is it because it stopped working? Or just before it stops working? I heard Brian Ausru say he recommends not doing a program more than twice in a row. How do you think Tom Havlin would place in a strongman competition? So uh, Tom Havlin, uh, obviously it would depend on the, the competition, I guess, and what the implements are and stuff. If he trained exclusively for strongman and, you know, got uber specific to that, I think he would do well. He is ridiculously strong, uh, you know, in a lot of different planes of motion, ranges of motion, um, carrying things, statically lifting things. I think he would do well. He's tall. He's got a big frame. Uh, yeah, if, if he decided he wanted to focus on that, I think he would place well at high-level competitions. Uh, as far as how long do you keep the same things in your program? For me right now, it depends. Uh, I kind of just freestyle it a lot these days. Like I'll, If you go back a couple videos to like my kind of cross-fat template, that's sort of what I'm doing right now. Um, when I was very into powerlifting, um, and when I do powerlifting blocks, I will run something repeatedly, 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 as long as it's working. Uh, Ed Cohen did that his whole career, basically. Um, and I think a lot of people can do that. Uh, there, there's some new stuff coming out saying that, uh, you know, your body adapts to stimulus like after like two, three, four weeks, and it, it's good to change it up every two, three, four weeks. Um, I don't. I guess that's not super new. Louis had them doing that with conjugate, basically with the max effort stuff. A lot of ways to skin the cat. I personally am of the camp of you know run something into the fucking ground until it's not working no more. Ideally, you would switch like right before it stops working. Like you get the. You milk out the very last bit of gain that you're going to milk out from it. And that last rep is the one right before it stops working for you. That's unrealistic, of course, but that, that would be ideal. But I am, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Uh, so if, if you run just a 5x5 five five and you run it, you put 60 pounds on your 5x5 five five, after six months, you stall, you reset, another six months goes by, you put... 40 pounds on your five by five, another, then you reset after you stall. And then another six months and you put 30 pounds on your five by five. You just put 130 pounds on your five by five in a year and a half. Now, I, you know, that's just throwing weird numbers out there. Uh, but even if it starts working a little bit less, which everything is eventually going to start working a little bit less, the stronger you get. Um, I, I am, yeah, repeat and run all the way into the fucking ground with all due respect to Brian Ausser, a great dude, uh, great, knowledgeable intelligent uh, there's no right or wrong way here um but i am of the camp of if something is still working keep doing it do you ever think about deep power lifting your training yeah i have <laughs> i very much deal with power lifted my training uh to the point where you would be isolating your arms and if you ever do that which parts would you think you would isolate i.e all of them are just some specific ones 
forearms and triceps. So I've done tricep isolations all through my powerlifting career. Um, big fan of tricep press downs. Uh, they are my favorite um, in terms of just isolating the tricep. I don't really overthink it. Um, I, I've, I've been hitting some biceps. I know their biceps have never been my strongest suit, but they're coming around. Um, I do some curls. I do some single arm dumbbell curls. I do some breacher curls. I do some cable curls. Um, that's been kind of new. I've always done dumbbell hammer curls, like dating back a decade. Uh, but it was never with like great intensity or with the purpose of growing my arms. I really just did them very lightweight and pump work, uh, just as kind of a preventive maintenance type deal. Um, but I, I do isolations. I, I just, I don't film it cause I think it's boring. Um, so I don't really upload that stuff a lot. Uh, every now and then I'll throw out a video where it's like, this is a full day of what I'm doing. And there's a couple of you dig back, uh, like some full upper body days with all the accessories and stuff. But I really just, I, I really only film the compound lifts. I don't like filming the accessory stuff. I find it boring. Um, I do it, but, uh, it's, you know, I, I don't like to film it. It's weird. It's just not for me. Uh, do I do form checks? I do not do form checks. Um, I've got clients that I coach and I obviously do form checks for them, of course, in conjunction with, you know, communicating and, uh, you know, getting videos of their lifts and programming and all that other stuff. But no, I, I don't like have form check videos or just take, uh, take in a form check. Maybe I could, I don't know. I'm, I'm a busy man. Like I said, I'm not a professional YouTuber, but I do have a day job. Uh, I own a couple rental properties. I own a rental car, uh, husband, father, all that stuff. Uh, so and, and coaching clients on the side and my own training. Um, so yeah, I'm probably not going to do form checks. I don't know if this is why I said maybe I should, uh, so I've, I've been lacking and getting these videos out injury management. How long to wait before training in my case, a slip disc. I mean, it depends, right? It always, it depends. Uh, you should talk to a doctor. <laughs> I'm not one. Generally speaking, uh, I like to stay in motion um, I like to work in ranges of motion that are pain free, uh, around it, uh, the best I can and gradually increase the range of motion and or load, uh, as I see fit, um, without aggravating it through the years of bloat strength maxing and subsequent cutting. Did you track waist neck measurements? Uh, no, I did. I've never tracked measurements. Uh, it, it never really interested me. I think I had 19 inch arms at one time. Uh, my fat seps when I was uh, big, um, that was a video for Dan home physique a long time ago, uh, but I never really tracked measurements. <laughs> what was your name before you were born? You guys are wild. Do you think a labor job takes away from your ability to lift due to fatigue or enhances it due to adaptations to your work needs? Supposing you're doing something heavy like concrete or brick mason. Again, it depends. Uh, are you relatively new? Uh, are you lacking in conditioning, uh, et cetera? Uh, generally speaking, your body adapts. Like the human body is highly adaptable and it will become baseline. Whatever your, your labor job is, it's going to become baseline. Um, and it's really probably not going to have much effect on your lifting. It's probably going to have more effect on your physique and, you know, your daily amount of calories burned. That said, when you start to get towards the top and get advanced, uh, then it can become one of those things where maybe ditching the labor job for a, a less strenuous job can help you eke out, you know, that last 5% or so, uh, of gains at the very top. Um, but generally speaking, your body's going to find its baseline and uh, the, the labor job is just going to be that. It's just going to be baseline. I'm coaching my gym bro and he stopped being able to linearly progress on the bench at 45 kilos for five. What is it like? That's a hundred ish pounds. Uh, do I incorporate linear periodization already? We're both following Bald Omni Man's Beast Slayer program and he is gaining weight and progressing on all his other lifts. Well, if you're following Bald Omni Man's Beast Slayer program, I would ask Bald Omni Man. Um, I, I'm not familiar with that program. I don't know the ins and outs of it, so I can't really give an educated guess there. Typically speaking, with somebody that's newer, when they stop being able to linearly progress on like something like fives, I just do a reset and whatever weight they started at, start a little bit higher than that. Um, and then they should, you know, again, assuming they're a relative beginner, which with this weight, I, that's a safe assumption. 
Uh, they should, they, their next plateau will be beyond uh, this one just by a simple reset and putting in more work. Uh, that's basic, uh, just generalization. Again, in, in regards to the Beast Slayer program, uh, you got to ask Paris. What have been your go-to rowing variations over the years? Uh, cable rows. <laughs> I don't really like barbell rows. I've, I've, I'm one of those low back fatigue copers. Uh, I wanted to save my low back fatigue for squats and deadlifts. It's also a lot of why I did Larson press uh, to save low back fatigue uh, when benching. Um, but generally speaking, like seated cable rows. Uh, with a bunch of different attachments uh, have been my go-to row variations. I've done some single arm dumbbell rows too, but not a lot in the way of barbell rowing. Um, I've done a couple blocks here and there of barbell rows, uh, but nothing really significant. But anyways, that's it guys. Thanks for all the questions. Peace!